That's Apple fine. glasses, take one, camera one. Apple glasses, take one, camera two. Hey, Apple fans, Apple sheep, and anyone else out there watching, Richard here once again with iTalk. This one is all about Apple AR and VR hardware. Stay tuned. It's coming up right after the intro. This is iTalk. Well, it looks like Apple is diving headfirst into headgear. We're talking AR headset, codenamed N301, and Apple glasses, codenamed N421. So we all know that Apple's typical playbook is to take emerging consumer tech and make it reliable and easy to use for the mainstream market. They did this way back in the 80s with the home desktop computer and in 2007 with the smartphone market and the iPhone. And now it looks like AR VR. Apple has never really cared about being first, but being best. Tim Cook said it like this. The, the philosophy has always been to be the best not the first. This time though, rather than creating an iPhone-like hit designed, marketed, and intended for the mainstream consumer, Apple's AR headset appears to be a high-end niche product similar to Apple's other high-end products such as the Mac Pro. This plan by Apple appears to be intended to prepare developers and consumers for the eventual release of the more mainstream AR Apple glasses, which will take longer to develop. Personally, I can't wait for these products. A few years ago, people were questioning whether innovation at Apple still existed at all. Well, I think between Apple Silicon, the rumored Apple car, and now Apple AR headset and Apple glasses, the doubters have been clearly unceremoniously silenced. Now, I know I've said revolutionary before when talking about Apple, but once again, these AR products could potentially revolutionize once again how we work, play, and just conduct our everyday lives, but more importantly, help people with physical limitations in ways we could only dream of 10 years ago. Let's discuss. First, AR and VR, though similar, have some very key differences. AR, or otherwise known as augmented reality, provides computer-generated context and information about the world around us, allowing us to still interact with our surroundings. AR creates a modified view of the real world. Pokemon Go and furniture simulation apps are good examples. VR, or virtual reality, thrusts us into a virtual world, an alternate universe of sorts, designed to isolate us from our surroundings and allow us to interact with fictitious worlds in 360 degree, fully immersive and seemingly real but actually virtual fantasy. An example of VR is my own experience. I was at Best Buy a couple of years ago and tried some VR headset. I was virtually standing on the narrow edge of a cliff and it freaking freaked me out. I knew rationally in my brain that I was standing totally safe on a big, huge, wide floor. But the VR was so convincing that my brain's interpretation of those visual cues made me feel like one step and I'm <laughs> plummeting a thousand feet to my splattering bug on a windshield, gooey bloody death. So now on to Apple AR VR products. What are some features and what will they look like? First, let's talk about the VR headset. It was originally planned with a less powerful processor that would offload the bulk of the workload to a wireless home hub. This plan was pretty quickly quashed by then Chief of Design Johnny Ive as he envisioned a standalone product that could be used anywhere without dependence on a Wi-Fi-like home hub. The initial standalone device was originally designed with a fan and powerful processors, but this was much too heavy to be worn on the head. This led to a smaller, lighter fabric design that brings the screen closer to the user's face. There are reports that the fan stays and reports that the fan was scrapped. Since you wouldn't be able to wear glasses with this design, Apple created a system where custom prescription lenses could be inserted over the VR screens. The display is rumored to be 8K for each eye and would work with both AR and VR apps. Practical uses could include virtual 360 degree meeting rooms. Apple glasses. These are mostly rumored to be called Apple Glass. I've also seen Apple Glasses and Eyeglass. To me, Apple Glass is too close to Google Glass and really lacks originality. Personally, I'm thinking I kind of like Apple Eyeglasses or Apple Eyeglass or just simply Eyeglass or Eyeglasses. What do you think they should be called? Let me know in the comments below. The latest prototype is reported to look very similar to high-end designer sunglasses with a thick plastic frame to house the processors and battery. 
Apple Glasses will likely sync with your iPhone to display things like text messages, emails, maps, and games over the user's field of vision. It'll apparently run on an operating system called ROS for Reality Operating System. Battery life is thought to start at around three hours, and hopefully Apple will include a wireless charging case to extend its functional usage throughout the day. It would be nice to see at least an eight hour or longer battery life at some point in the future. Both lenses will feature displays that can be interacted with by using gestures. Speaking of the displays, Apple is planning to use quote, cutting edge OLED micro displays supplied by Sony for its glasses. These displays feature ultra fast response rates, ultra high contrast, wide color gamut, high luminance, low reflectance, and integrated drivers for a thin and light design. Apple glasses are rumored to have a one half inch display with 1280 by 960 resolution. Compare that with Google Glass, which has a resolution of 640 by 360 and Smart Eyeglass with a resolution of 419 by 138. And this appears to be pretty high resolution for VR glasses. It's not known yet, but there is speculation that field of view will be at least the same as the HoloLens 2, which has a field of view of 52 degrees. Apple almost certainly has plans for third-party apps and is reportedly considering a dedicated VR app store similar to apps for Apple TV and Apple Watch. Now, I mentioned before for the Apple VR headset, Apple created a system where custom prescription lenses can be inserted over the VR screens. For Apple Glass, though, a patent granted to Apple has been tantalizing grist for the rumor mill that Apple Glasses won't need prescription lenses because they'll automatically adjust for people with poor eyesight using a, quote, optical assembly. This patent could also be for a standalone smartphone-powered VR headset or a second-generation pair of Apple Glasses, so we shall see. Another really cool feature hinted at through patents is how Apple Glasses could let you view parts of the world that you want to see, similar to Google Street View and Apple Maps. This view would be projected directly onto the Apple Glass lenses, and you could digitally teleport yourself anywhere you want to go. I mean, seriously, how's that for totally cool? You could also control Apple Glasses by using, quote, touch-sensitive surfaces for receiving user inputs, such as tap and swipe inputs, as well as Siri, according to other patent applications. Then there's the fascinating feature rumored for Apple Glasses, virtual typing, where you type in the air with your fingers and input keystrokes on a virtual keyboard. I mean, that's just way beyond cool. Other more recent patents granted show how Apple Glass could automatically unlock all of your Apple devices, similar to how you use your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. The patent, of course, doesn't explicitly say Apple Glasses, but when it refers to an authenticated device that is worn by a user as a head-mounted device, unquote, I think we can pretty much deduce with a fair amount of certainty that that's referring to Apple Glasses. There are other patents that suggest Apple is looking at ways to help people see better in low-light conditions. Finally, and probably the most significant feature based again on patent applications, strongly suggests that Apple Glasses could potentially be controlled through eye movements, blinks, and stares. As a physician, I think this is probably the single most exciting possible feature of Apple Glasses. I can't even begin to understate how potentially groundbreaking this is. The implications for healthcare are just astounding. I mean, it's absolutely incredible to think what possibilities this technology could offer for people with physical limitations. It also leads me to the question about vision. Could Apple Glasses lead to technology where a blind wearer could actually see using them? Like LeVar Burton's character, Geordi LaForge, in Star Trek Generations. I mean, it's really, it's really quite emotional to think about such possibilities for people. Now let's talk cost. Apple's high-end VR headset, since it's targeting a more niche market, more pro-type people like Mac Pro types, rather than the mass consumer market, at least initially the expected cost is upwards of $3,000 to $3,500 US. Apple glasses are likely expected to hit stores at around $499 US for the non-prescription models. Now, all that being said, how do we actually know that Apple is developing an AR headset or Apple glasses at all? Key hires, patent applications, some of which I've already mentioned, and key acquisitions make it pretty obviously undeniable. Notable hires. One of the most prominent was computer science professor Doug Bowman, who specializes in 3D interfaces and the benefits of immersive virtual environments. 
Another was Yuri Petrov, formerly at Oculus, hired on by Apple as a, quote, research scientist. He studied VR experiences, prototyped optics, and developed computer simulation software. Finally, Andrew Kim, a former Microsoft HoloLens designer, was brought on board and a litany of other AR VR hires. Acquisitions. The two most notable Apple acquisitions were NextVR in May 2020 and a company called Spaces in August 2020. NextVR was a California-based company that combined reality with sports, music, and entertainment. It offered VR experiences for watching live events on VR headsets from PlayStation, HTC, Oculus, Google, Microsoft, and others. Spaces designed VR experiences that people could engage in malls and other locations. It also created VR experiences for video communication apps like Zoom. Other notable acquisitions were AR startup Matayo in May 2015 and FaceShift in August of that same year. In early 2016, both Emotion and Flyby Media were acquired by Apple and in 2017, RealFace. Patents and patent applications. There are more of them and multiple patents and patent applications by Apple that strongly suggest the new AR VR hardware, but the most notable was a patent granted in July of 2020 that covers possible input methods with Apple glasses describing a system where the glasses use infrared heat sensing to detect when someone touches a real world object, allowing the glasses to then project controls onto a real world surface. With this method, Apple Glasses could project an AR control interface onto any object in the real world for a mixed reality overlay kind of effect. And Apple is working on patent applications for VR tech that could be used in autonomous vehicles, such as in car VR systems with a VR headset worn to provide entertainment and help with tasks like reading and working. It could also help alleviate car sickness while the vehicle is in motion. Multiple other patents and patent applications starting in 2008, some that I've briefly mentioned, also make it clear that Apple is working on these products. So let me just say, I'm super excited about these new Apple VR products and I've never really been into VR before. But some of the implications, especially in healthcare, are just beyond the pale of exciting and really rather emotional as well when you think about it. To think that this type of technology could eventually lead to blind people being able to put on a pair of glasses and being able to see, I just can't even imagine the sheer utter joy this could bring to people. And for people with physical limitations, the potential for a world where we break through many physical and communication barriers like never imagined. It's just kind of overwhelming to think about such possibilities. But beyond the serious healthcare implications, just some of the more mundane, everyday, just really fun, really cool applications of this technology, like being able to put on a headset and virtually walk the streets of Paris or London or anywhere in the world that you want to see or go, or being able to type on a typewriter in the air with your fingers virtually. How cool is that? So I really can't wait to see what Apple VR headsets and Apple glasses have in store for us. What do you think is going to happen? What features do you think they'll have? What features would you like to see? Leave your questions and comments below. I'm Richard, this is iTalk, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thanks so much for watching. Until the next one, we are out. Smile, smile. And key acquisitions make it pretty... Cut. Cut. Perfect. I think that's a keeper. Yeah.